Porter Moser, head coach of Chicago. Hey, coach, how you doing? I'm great, guys. How are you? We are doing so well. So glad to uh, actually have an NCAA tournament to be talking about. I know uh, the only people happier than us are the guys that are that are playing in it and coaching in it like you are. Um, congratulations, by the way. You guys are just the third team to beat a number one seed in the second round by double digits, led wire to wire over number one seed uh, Illinois. Um, what has this ride been like for you? I know you made the Final Four a couple of years ago, so I, I don't want to say you're used to it, but this is not new, at least for a couple of the, uh, the older guys in your team. You know, we got, we got two guys that were on that team, uh, Lucas Williamson and Cameron Crowick, but everybody else is new. So what's, what's really great about this is just being able to sustain it, the program, and just to, it's a big reason why I stayed is just what, you know, feeling like you can just keep building something special. And uh, to, to all the things we had to go through this year, the twists and turns, the pivots, to get to this point and, you know, to get in here and then, you know, in our state of Illinois, two ranked teams going at each other to go to the Sweet 16. The storyline couldn't have been better for the Loyola Ramblers going into this thing. Oh, it was an unbelievable storyline. And, oh, by the way, you guys get to play with a big old chip on your shoulder because the committee, I think, screwed the pooch giving you guys an eight seed when you've been ranked in the top 25 for over a month and your top 10 in the net and Ken Palm and all these other metrics. What did you say to your guys when, when you got that eight seed? You know what? I'm always uh, talking to him about control. What you can control. So he, you know, I, part of the, we all kind of knew we we're like, you know what? All right, let's roll with it. Let's just go. And because, you know, the crazy thing about it is they came up with the net and what does the net stand for? It's the NCAA evaluation tool. That's what they said they were going to use and we were nine. So the, the one through four got all the one seeds. Five through eight got all the two seeds. And the ninth got the eighth seed. So it just is what it is. I know it's a hard job. I know they got things. So we really didn't make that big of a, a chip on our shoulder kind of thing. We just said, all right, let's go. Let's, it's all about pouring into Georgia Tech. And we, we beat them, and then it was all about Illinois. And that's kind of what we did last time. We didn't worry about a lot of the outside stuff. It was just what was in front of us and – our guys, our guys just are really close, really together, and just have this confidence that they believe they can win the national championship. And last time we were seven minutes away, and we know we got some obstacles in front of us, but our guys believe. Dan Helly filling in on the Rich Eisen Show with Porter Moser, the head coach, coach at Loyola Chicago. I, coach, I have to ask you because I was – doing a little deep dive and watching some YouTube videos of some interviews and podcasts that you've done. And there was, I can't remember who it was, but he talked about what great friends you guys were at the top of the podcast and then mispronounced your last name. And you called them right from the jump. And I love that as somebody who gets my name mispronounced all the time. <laughs> yeah. I, I really appreciated to, that. I think it was Tim miles. Like, it was. We were, yeah. We were joking. Yeah. And he was a great friend of mine. And uh, I was just joking with him when he said that. And he just, he got, he said Mosher on that too. How, it, is, is, it, is it so funny how he is it 50 50 the amount of people that say Mosier as opposed to Moser? You know what? Exactly. It is. It's, it's actually more say Mosier like it's SH. And uh, I really could care less. I'm not one of those guys. I really don't care. Um, but I just had to bust Tim's chops on it. I love it. I love it. Well, I, I thought that was pretty funny. As I said, you know, my last name's Helly, and I can't tell you how often people just don't want to say hell. So they'll say Healy or Hallie. I'm like, it's Helly. It's just a Norwegian name, coach. Nothing I can do about it. Um, hey, so I love the emphasis on defense. You guys are the best defensive team in the country. And I'm wondering, it's so hard. So many coaches preach defense. But but you manifest it. You make it happen. Your players make it happen. But you, you, you guide them along in that process. Does this go all the way back to when you attended a, a Bobby Knight camp when you were a kid? This love of defense? <laughs> no, I wish I could say that, but no. I don't even have my memory that long. Um, <laughs> but no, the, the, uh, I tell you what, you know, I worked for Rick Majerus, and, um, you know, he was so good defensively. But I think that's how we frame it, you know, with our guys in the recruiting process. You know, sometimes you say, oh, we're going to play defense. And they think, oh, we're going to slow it down. we got to play. But we kind of frame it like our defense creates offense. You know, we, we get stops, we can run. We, we get steals, we can run. And we talk about it, we frame it with – how, like, in the pros, everyone's talking about two-way players. You know, Kobe, Michael, Kwai, Clay Thompson. You know, two-way players. And we frame it that way. Hey, you're going to learn. We're, we're going to play great defense. We're going to create offense. We are going to run. Because we've been up in the top, you know, 40 in, in offensive efficiency as well. 
And uh, so I think it's how you frame it. The guys believe in it. They don't think we're just going to walk it up. They think we're going to guard our tails off, get stops, and run. So they, they really believe it's a, it's a way we can win. Having Crutwig and Williamson there as your, as your senior leaders who have mm-hmm. been there before, how much do you lean on these two guys? You know what? It's huge because, you know, so we, we won the Missouri Valley Tournament two weeks ago, and we cut down the nets. We're celebrating. You can see all the guys because we, we got a lot of new guys. And they were just so excited. And we had a celebration cut up. We went in the locker room, and those two were like, you guys, this is awesome, but it gets a lot better. And when you, gotta, when you guys got voices that come from your peers, your, your friends, it just carries more weight because the coach can always say that, hey, I've been there before, you know, we got to do this. But when those guys said it, hey, it gets a lot better from here. we got to lock in. You know, we can advance and believe you can advance in this thing. And uh, just huge just having those two guys been on that stage at the Final Four uh, a couple years ago. It's also huge to have 101-year-old sister Jean. She became a, a phenomenon nationally, uh, just beloved by everybody when you guys made the uh, Final Four run a couple of years ago. The pregame speech before the Illinois game, do you give her a, a, a scouting report, or is she doing no. this on her own? I mean, she just looks at the stats, and she, you know, she's, she said, you know, she, it was, it's funny sometimes. She'll say, oh, watch out for number 35. You know, she's, she's unbelievably sharp now. Um, but it's funny how it, it's kind of morphed into a scouting report. Um, <laughs> it's but amazing. She's, but she's so much a part of who we are, Fabric. She does give the, uh, the guys a blessing before they go and, you know, this, this time through the phone. But, um, you know, for 101 years old, she still emails us, each one of us, after the game, every game. And she's just, just really sharp, and, she, you know, she's, um, she's woven in the fabric of who we are. Hold on a second. She, when you say each one of us, as in just yeah. the coaching staff, the players, everybody? No, I, I get a personal email. Then she sends each player a personal email after every game. That's incredible. Every yeah, every I, game. I, m- my in-laws, who are far from 101, <laughs> do not send emails. That's, that's impressive. Well, my, I, I want to correct myself. My father-in-law does. My mother-in-law doesn't. So they could be watching right now. Coach, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> that's yeah, don't get yourself in trouble with the in-laws. See, you, you, you know about that. What is, uh, was it? Was there a question mark about her coming? I would imagine being a hundred and one, oh, and be, yeah. she insisted, she, she, right? She, she didn't attend a game. Arch Madness, which is the Missouri Valley tournament in St. Louis, they didn't let her go. And then she, I talked to her after we got back, and she was pissed. <laughs> she was like, um, <laughs> she looked right in the eye. She goes, "I'm going." She goes, "I looked them all in the eye and said, I'm healthier than all you. I've been vaccinated. I got thirty straight tests. I'm going." And right then I knew that, like, she's, she's getting her way. And uh, sure enough, um, she's here and everybody's fired up that she's up in the, in the balcony. Sister Jean is a beast. I love it. <laughs> oh, gosh. I, I Team to watch. It's fun to watch you guys play. She's a great story. I, I love your ties to Rick Majerus. He was one of my favorite coaches just from afar. Um, you know, when he was at uh, Utah way back in the day, I love the way that his, his team played and, Um, I saw that you started journaling, which is something that I've been telling myself for the last decade that I'm going to do, and I have yet to do it. But you started doing that because of Majerus. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. It's just, you know, one, it was just every day I was just learning stuff. So I had like a basketball journal going, and then I had another side one of just crazy, hilarious stories. And I'm like, I got to start writing this down. I mean, there's just so much that was, you know, and then we get together, guys that that had played for him and then coached with him. We'll see each other, and we'll just start telling stories and just laugh. And so I started writing them down, and I got about 100 pages of just hilarious stories. I'll sit up on my fire pit sometime and just start laughing, rehashing some of the stories. He meant so much to me, but he was also a great friend. Hilarious guy, so much fun, but he was a genius. Just sitting there in the my four years I spent as an associate head coach at St. Louis, we just sitting in a boardroom and, like, watching his mind twist and turn and game plan, and it was, it was like I was getting a Ph.D. from the guy. And he, it just meant a lot to me, and he, he's gone way too early. Did you, uh, you, you've written a book using some of those stories? Is that right or no? No, no, that was a different, like, I, I always thought if I was going to write a book, it was going to be, you know, remember how um, Steve Alford had a book and he put it out and it, it was called Playing for Night. Right. And I remember reading it cover to cover, like, and I just thought it was, it was riveting, just what it was like to play for night. And I got, I get asked the question all the time, especially my first, you know, while I was working for him, it'd be like, hey, what's it like working for Majerus? Everyone always asked me that question. So I was going to write, I was, my mind was always going to write a book called Working for Majerus. And 
then I got after the Final Four, I got approached by the Loyola Jesuit Press. I'm like, eh, I think they want a different path for this book. <laughs> it was uh, it was more of uh, my path, my journey of faith, and uh, my journey of, of of how I got to Loyola and got to the Final Four. And um, so I ended up doing that. But someday I might do it. Someday I might do it something, and and it will be won't be disparaging at all. It'll be more honoring him, but telling funny stories of how you know because. There was no one like him. There was no one like him in our profession. Yeah, he was one of the all-time greats and, uh, and, and definitely uh, missed by all college basketball fans around the country. Um, I, I do need to ask you about what you have coming up. Uh, the Midwest region is just completely turned upside down. You guys, uh, despite being the, the eighth seed uh, coming in, you're the second highest seed remaining, and, and now you have Oregon State coming up. What's the, what's the scouting report? Do you have one yet on the Beavers? Yeah, I mean they're 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 very good. They're very hot. I mean, think about this: we drew the ACC tournament champs. They were hot coming in. Then we drew the Big Ten champs. They were hot coming in. Now we're drawing the Pac-12 tournament champs. Three straight tournament champs of Power Five conferences. So you know they they're very well coached. Coach Kinkle does an awesome job. They're they're hot. They're shooting it. They got a big man. They got a great point guard. Um, you know they're going to be hard to guard, and I think that's a big part of it. And then you look at the defense on the other two games with Syracuse and Houston, you've got two contrasting styles. You've got Houston, who's probably played some of the best man-to-man physical defense in the country. And then you've got Syracuse, who just has that long, long zone that you just got to figure out. And they're shooting it well. So some very hot teams um, coming in here in these last four teams. Finally, before we let you go, Dan Helley filling in for Rich Eisen with uh, Porter Moser, the Chicago head coach. <laughs> uh, coach, what are you – what are you doing to keep busy when you guys aren't practicing and playing? Do you, are you guys, do you have everything scheduled out every hour? We're doing this. We're watching games together as a team or do guys get free time? I know there's really nowhere to go to kind of do their own thing. So that's a great question. Uh, Dan Helly. <laughs> there we go. I love the enunciation. I listen. Um, no, but I tell you that's a, when we got here, we had to go to quarantine. So we got here Sunday night. We actually watched selection show in the Indy 500 Speedway, which was really cool. They let us take our buses around because once you checked in the hotel, you had to test and get put in quarantine. And I'm like, I'm watching the selection show with my guys, man. I'm not doing it separate in our rooms. So we checked in Sunday night, tested, had to quarantine. Woke up, had to test again, quarantine again. So then once it was almost Monday night when you got out. So really Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're, you're practicing, preparing, and you don't get to go out outside much. But this is the week that we got to be really uh, aware because another week here, you, we haven't had much time to go outside. They really got you in a bubble. Um, they, the NCAA has been really well organized with the testing and all that. It's just there's some downtime, and this, it's going to be this week. So we've been coming up with some things to get these guys mentally uh, loose and free and, and just so much where they get out and do some things. So this week is the big week for, for this. Yeah, that's going to be uh, that's going to be maybe your most challenging job is to find stuff for uh... – for the kids to do, we talked to Paul Mills, Oral Roberts head coach. They're playing a they're playing a kickball game, staff versus team. So maybe that gives you an idea of you know something. No, to do. Are, they, are they going outside? Are they, are they able to go out? They're probably going to go during. We get like a half hour outside. So we were throwing around a football uh, a couple days ago. That was the one thing we had a football in the baseball field. And the guys were throwing it. and They had a soccer ball. But uh, I like the kickball idea. Yeah, that's I'm not great bad. at wiffle ball too. I am. I'm like I'm a phenomenal wiffle ball player. So you can hit that, that wiffle ball curve. Out. Oh yeah. Uh, I grew up in Chicago. You play 16-inch softball in Chicago and wiffle ball. Okay. Two great ones. Ah, Chicago guy, Porter Moser. Hey, Coach, good luck, man. We're all rooting for you. Uh, It's been a pleasure talking to you. I really appreciate the time. And um, enjoy every minute of it. I know you are. Thanks, guys. We'll see you. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.